it seems very clear that business as usual is no longer an option. Nobody's talking about that. So we're either in some kind of final fatal meltdown of the values of Western civilization revealed now after a thousand or two thousand year run to essentially be bankrupt, or we're going to transform ourselves unrecognizably. There really isn't any middle ground. The most radical and least likely uh, future of all, it seems to me, is a future in which we continue just to stumble forward as we have been since the Industrial Revolution. That's no longer an option. And so then the question becomes a sort of a Gnostic conundrum. Is this the final act of some kind of great cosmic tragedy in which intelligence rises out of the slime, is shown to be inadequate and sinks back into the slime? Or is this a, you know, a tale of uh, difficulty overcome and heroism won? And are we going to be able to shed the monkey nature and shed the ego and actually move up to some kind of shining ideal? You know, it's a, if you think of us as the descendants of the angels, this is a pretty tatty circumstance we've come to rest in. On the other hand, if you think of us as the descendants of shit-hurling apes screeching through the treetops, then it's pretty amazing <laughs> what has been accomplished here. Um, you know, one of the dilemmas that I feel very strongly, and I'm just sort of talking off the top of my head here because whenever a crowd is small enough, I sort of feel like I'm in my own living room. We don't have to have the pretense of knowing lecturer and, uh, uh, you know, eager to be educated audience. Um, the, real, the real challenge, I think, is trying to decide what is baggage and what is ballast that's going to have to be dumped. Can the future be a celebration of humanness as we have known it, meaning in the animal body with all its, uh, you know, joys and pains, with all its frailty and, uh, and potential for ecstasy, or is what we call human nature somehow transcendental? And did we only rest for a moment in the monkey body, as once the, the cutting edge of evolution must have rested in the great reptiles, and at some earlier phase in history, rested in the fish, and so on. Is consciousness something uniquely human, and must we keep the animal body with us? Is our destiny to become the gardener caretakers of a revivified earth, or is the earth like a placenta of some sort that we have literally sucked all the nutrition and potential out of because we're on our way to some grander, higher domain of being? I don't have the answer to these kinds of questions. I feel it very poignantly. It's very poignantly focused in the psychedelic, in the experience of psychedelic plants and psychedelic shamanism because, you know, as any of you have followed my ideas on this know, I've spent a lot of time in the Amazon basin with human populations that seem to have struck some kind of dynamic balance with the earth. And yet the paradox of that dynamic balance is that when you take the sacraments, the hallucinogenic plants of these people, you're propelled into worlds of uh, science fiction-like strangeness, transcendental dimensions of titanic implication 
And then, at least I personally have come to the realization that this is how those cultures have chosen to deal with the Faustian impulse in human beings. It's been somehow confined in the domain of the imagination. We, meaning we who trace our, uh, our ancestry back to Europe, are part of a different style, a different strain of human being, if you will. We are the idea excretors, not, not uh, satisfied to have a canoe, a net, five fish hooks, and uh, a bowl, but instead we take matter, we Western civilization, Western technology, and we impress upon matter ideas, millions of ideas, cities like Manhattan, uh, high performance weaponry, uh, enormous works of art. All of this is a kind of impulse, very strong in Western human beings to bring the ideas out of the domain of mind and to somehow solidify them in matter. Permanence, the cult of the West is permanence. I always feel that when you can find the obsessive center of a society, you probably have put your finger on its, uh, on its central neurosis as well. I remember when I spent time in India, India is rife with talk of Shakti. Shakti is energy conceived of in various ways. It can be sexual energy or it can actually be electricity flowing through wires is called Shakti. And I realized being in India that the Indian obsession with Shakti was a consequence of there not being any. That this was a society where energy had become the hardest commodity to encounter. And I think in the West, permanence is, the thing, is our great bugaboo because we uh, are born into the realization that everything is slipping through our fingers at the very moment that it comes into existence. The hardest psychedelic truth to assimilate and you don't have to take psychedelics to assimilate this. If you just live, this will be hammered in on you again and again. And it's not, to, well, it's a cause for exaltation. It's a cause for despair. It's that nothing lasts. Nothing lasts. You know, not your fortune, not your misfortune, not your lovers, your enemies, your children, ultimately not even your own life and body. Everything fades. And so the Western response to this is the attempt to create something permanent. Civilizations, enduring ideas, enduring institutions. All this is doomed to failure. And I see this Western uh, obsession with the cult of permanence as a consequence of the Western obsession with ego. Ego, to my mind, is the very thing, if you had to somehow meld each problem into the next problem to try and reduce all problems to one, what you would eventually come to is the realization that ego is what is destroying us our inability to displace our loyalty away from the unique locus of space and time represented by our own bodies. You know, community, communalism, these are the things that we fear, that we repress, and that we at the same time struggle to realize. I mean, the collapse of communism on one level was the collapse of a repressive, nightmarish, paranoid social system. But the dream which lay behind that was a dream of community, of unity, of sisterhood and brotherhood. And the great concern now is that with the collapse of even uh, a pretense of that position, that we are further fragmented, further atomized, 
into individual competing microbes of greed and need. And this is precisely the attitudes which will push us uh, ever closer to species extinction and to global ruin. Well, when you look at thousands and thousands of psychedelic experiences, you, to my mind, what you come away with is the notion that, you know, no matter who you are, Amazonian shaman, Hasidic rabbi, nuclear physicist, the psychedelic will dissolve boundaries. It will dissolve your boundaries and force you to realize the commonality of the flesh. You know, it's a, a startling thing to realize that really what you represent is nothing more than a point of view and that we each are such a point of view, triangulating perception through what is essentially simply a nexus of our past history. We always are talking about the past and the future, but it's worth noticing that we all managed to get here this morning, this place, this time, and not one of us has the same past as any other of us. This moment, like any moment, is not a confluence of the past, it is a confluence of many pasts. And these many pasts come into a nexus of connection and then move on to become many, many futures. Thanks for watching that video. Please leave me a comment and let me know what you thought about that clip. And please remember to like this video and subscribe for more.